first part of budgeting, taking control of your finances, is knowing how much you spend. Those that have bank accounts can just go through and look at their bank accounts, sort them into categories. This is bills for the house, this is car payment, insurance, gas, um, the house, there would be rent, electricity, internet, that kind of thing. And so just go through and categorize all the different things. Grocery money, and I keep grocery money separate from eating out money because eating out money is a way different thing to spend on. So the first part is again, sorting them all into categories. Don't forget if there's quarterly payments every three or four months or six months or a year, like um, those that pay property tax, that's a once a year bill, but you need to go ahead and assign it a monthly value by dividing it by 12. And so then you have that saved up when it comes time to make that property tax payment, you have it already set aside. So what I do is again, I add up everything and then um, I do my stuff on a monthly, even though we get paid bi-weekly, because I don't know for sure when those bi-weekly payments are going to happen. First part of the month, last part of the month, you know, this first week, the third week, the fourth week. Sometimes there's a fifth week in there. Sometimes we do get three payments in one month, just because it depends on how the payroll periods fall. And those months are extra, which is so nice, because then I can catch up on something. So again, sorting everything into categories. Some things you can't skip on. I'm paying rent you know I really really want to pay my rent so that I have a place to live um, again electric bill you can skip a month but I wouldn't do more than that that's only out of desperation um, skip a month and pay something this month but then next month know for sure that you have to make that that electrical payment especially right now with COVID if you are struggling with finances call your credit card call your car loan people call and ask them, say, uh, I'm really struggling to make all my bills. Is there something we could work out? And right now, everybody is more than willing to do that. Even during normal times, if you call and ask, sometimes they will let you skip a car payment or um, pay half now and half in two weeks or something. Depends on, again, what's going on, but you need to kind of know what's happening and when money is coming and going so that you can plan for those. I'm gonna skip it now, but I will make it up by, and you know that date firmly. And then the other part of this, the equation with budgeting and finances is your income. So my husband is back to work and he gets paid every two weeks. I am right now on the emergency relief EI thing. So I get 500 every week. Knowing what you have going out, knowing what you have coming in, and then it's just a balance chart. I have all this that I need to pay and I have this that's coming in. What can I assign where? And I have um, a special bank account set up for my husband and I and that's just the bill account money goes in there and the bills get paid from there and then I have another one a savings account where any extra money gets thrown down into the savings account and when we have emergencies happen like you know trying to get an Airbnb two weeks a week and a half before rent is due I had the money set aside for that so I suggest doing something like that and I have it set up automatically that say the car insurance comes out on the 20th on the 18th, I put in whatever it is, 150 bucks into the bill account. And then on the 20th, that car insurance payment is made. Always do it at least two or three days ahead of time, because sometimes with holidays, they'll ask early. And other times again with holidays, it may take an extra day or two for that money to actually be transferred in there and wait for that bill payment. So I always do it two or three days ahead of time so that I know when they come asking, the money will be in there. They just take it and go. There's a couple things that I have set up to go on to credit cards and that was at the time it was a better option for us because then I could ignore them for a month or so if I really really needed to and that's something again I do pay interest on it if I don't pay it off right away so it's one of those you know yes this is worth it I'm paying whatever 22% interest but I know that my phone bill is going to be paid or internet or whatever whatever it is. Some places would not allow me to do that onto a credit card, so I had to do it from a bank account, and then that's the only option. So I, I, I put the ones that I could on credit cards because then I'm like, well, every time it goes out, I will pay it, and if something's happening, I can ignore it. So that gives me a little bit of flexibility there, too. I go ahead and make a monthly payment onto my credit card for the, I think, Spotify and the cell phones both come out of the same credit card. So I make a payment every month for that automatically so at least I paid that part off and it's not attributing interest back to it and then again it keeps ticking over that 
there's other stuff in there it keeps holding on you can control what you spend um, a lot of people use envelopes where you put in this is the month the money between now and the 15th that I have to spend on lunches gas um, monster drinks uh, coffees in the morning whatever your thing is this is what I have and until the 15th passes I can't open up that second envelope you can do it by week, you can do it by chunks of time, like the first, the 15th, and the 15th, and the 30th. And that seems to help a lot of people because you just have that envelope. Whatever money is in the envelope, that's what you have to spend because you can actually see it. Um, credit cards and plastic money nowadays, you just tap it and it pays. You tap and it pays. You tap and it pays. And as long as there's money in there, it keeps tapping. So you tend to overspend because you know, oh, I have an extra $10 in there. I can go ahead and do that. I, I can do this. I can do this. So if you have an actual envelope of cash, which now they're discouraging cash because of the virus, but um, if you have an envelope of cash, that's what you have. You have that envelope of cash, and when you've spent it, you're done. No more coffees for you until the time passes, and you can get that next envelope. So again, it's one of those that depends on what's happening in your life. It depends on where you're going, but you can... Once you see where you're spending money, it's really easy to go ahead and change that. And go, you know what? I'm only going to get coffee once a week. Um, I'll take my lunch three days a week and I can get coffee one extra day. Something like that. Where Because we all know that spending food out is way more expensive than by taking a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And it doesn't have to be peanut butter and jelly. It can be a pretty nice sandwich um, or leftovers. But like, okay, I'm going to absolutely take my lunch three days a week so that I can have coffee twice a week because I really, really, really enjoy my coffee. Um, whatever works for you, just that you know you have X to work with, and that's where that envelope comes in. I have, you know, 100 bucks in that envelope, and that's for two weeks. of Whatever I need, lunches, coffees, gas, you know, um, energy drinks, whatever your things are, and just know that's what I have to spend. So you can divide it out and, like, whatever it divides to, We'll say 10 days from the first to the 10th you have a hundred dollars so that's ten dollars a day so then you know i have ten dollars a day if i want to buy a coffee and a small lunch that will work out because i have ten dollars a lot of each day if i want to skip spending coffee and take my lunch then i still have the ten dollars from yesterday today so i can get a really nice lunch because i know my friend and i were going to go out to this place that's you know a little bit more expensive than i usually go so i want to save today's money for tomorrow and that's um Mostly is that you can see, see what you have, see what you have to pay. You've already deducted all the household bills, all the expenses that absolutely need to be paid. This is extra money. Um, and then the other thing is paying yourself first. I have an automatic savings thing, so as soon as money hits my account, it takes $25 and puts it away. And that's every two weeks. I get $25 taken out and it's put away. I put it into an RRSP, which in Canada is a um, retirement savings plan. So it's kind of like an investment for when I retire. But even if you just set it aside, you have it for an emergency. You have it um, if something crazy goes on. Um, and that's again, it's something that you need to decide. If you want to go talk to an investment person, um, sometimes they will help you with budgeting and financing. Sometimes they just want to sell you you know, stock markets, trades, and um, a portfolio to invest in. And it depends on where you are in your life and what's going on that that may be a thing. But um, when I first moved to Canada, I went and talked to an investment guy, and I asked him about TFSAs, which is a tax-free savings account, and RRSPs, Registered Retired Savings Plan, And because I had no idea what they were. I came from the U.S. I didn't know what the Canadian things were. So I asked a guy, and I wasted, I don't know, 45 minutes of his life, but I learned all about TFSAs and RRSPs. I had read about them, but I still had some questions about, you know, the, the nuances between them and um, how they actually worked. Because they just told me, well, you can do this. You can put it into a TFSA. Oh, you can put money into the, you know. I was like, well, what? How does that work? When, you know, what, what do I get out of it by doing that? So I went and wasted some of his life, but I learned a lot. Most of it is that you just, again, you know, you know what's going on. You know what you have as far as bills. You know what you have as income. Sort through what you have to pay. Um, sort through what you want to pay for the coffees, the food out, that kind of thing. Don't forget fun. Put in there at once a month. My husband and I go to a movie or we take a road trip and have lunch. Something a little bit different 
that you do for fun and relaxation. Um, you can't just, it's like a diet. You can't just eat the healthiest food all the time. You're gonna want chocolate cake. So that's what I, the, you know, the date night for my husband and I, that's our chocolate cake. And we set money aside for that and we know what it is. And there's times when we're both like, you know what, I really don't feel like going out. I don't feel like doing this. Let's go to the grocery store and we'll get something really nice. And he will cook it and we'll have a nice dinner at home spending the same amount of money as we would if we had gone out. And so that's the thing too, it's really flexible as far as what you want to do with it, just that you are conscious of what you have and you don't go over that limit that you keep overspending, 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 put it on a credit card, then try to pay the credit card off and you're still overspending. Uh, sooner or later it's gonna break. So it's one of the things that as long as you know about it, you can work within the parameters. And it's not fun sometimes keeping a budget, but try to get a friend on board and tell them, you know, I really want to clean up my finances. I want to pay down my credit cards. Would you help me be responsible? And I say, oh yeah, I'll go ahead. Yeah, I'll buy that. You know, and just be like, um, do you want to buy that? I thought you were trying to focus on paying down your credit cards. And it's a really good reminder for everybody just to be like, stop for a second and go, yeah, yeah, I did want to pay my credit cards off. I'll do that, yeah. And so that's the thing too, Sim, um, I rewarded myself for the first little while. If I made my whole budget for the month, there was $20 extra for me. And that's not a lot, but it was enough that I could go have a lunch or um, meet somebody for a, a bubble tea. Because I had made my budget the whole month, I had $20 extra. So something like that, reward yourself for a month, two months, six months, a year, when you finally get them paid off. It, it's gonna be a long haul if you're, if you're already you know, struggling with debt and credit cards. But I think it's more than worth it that you know when craziness happens, I know that I'm okay. I, um, my husband mentioned the other night that he was so glad that we could just do what we needed to do. We, we didn't have to be like, um, where, where the, where's that money going to come from? How are we going to try to find a place to stay? What are we going to do now? I got a hotel that same night and then I got the Airbnb and it works out that it's a really, really nice place and we can afford it, it's this, almost the same as our rent. Um, we have a kitchen available, we have Wi-Fi, we, have, um, we can come and go as we please. Because um, he works really late at night, that was a thing for us, that um, a lot of the people are like, well, you have to be in by 10. Well, he works until 10, they're serving food until 10, and then who knows how long it's gonna take to clean up and prep for tomorrow. And you know, sometimes he gets home at one, sometimes at two, sometimes later. It just depends on the night and how crazy things were. Fridays and Saturdays tend to be the longest ones. But um, for us, that we had the, the money set aside, it wasn't set aside for that purpose, but it was set aside for future, that we could just go and get what we needed and take care of our life. It wasn't a hardship. I mean, it wasn't fun, but it was not a hardship. So I just wanted to kind of stress about budgets. And if you would like, you can contact me in the comments. Um, I do have some budgeting worksheets that will help you with categories. Sometimes people forget things, but looking through the bank statement is the best thing. What went out last month? Okay, there was the, you know, the internet bill, there was the electric bill, there was the car payment, there was the car insurance, there was gas, there was groceries. It adds up and it's amazing how quickly we spend the money if we're not actually conscious of what we have and what we have to spend versus just, I feel like spending, so I'm going to spend. So this is Holly. Um, comment below if you would like my budget worksheets and I will get those out to you. Thank you very much. I'll see you next week. Bye.